Next up is uh, information requests. Um, we have <coughs> four outstanding requests, all associated with getting uh, legal answers from the selectman's lawyer. Um, as I understand it last on Monday night. Right? Monday night, yes, yeah. we talked about it. The uh, attorney was supposed to uh, give us his legal answers to our questions. Uh, is that correct, understanding? Well, we talked about his legal response to the lease purchase for the trucks, for the Mack mm -hmm. trucks. That was discussed at the Board of Selectmen meeting. Mm -hmm. So did you want that in? Well, we had specific legal questions. We were asked to pose the legal questions. We posed the legal questions. And we were led to believe that uh, those legal questions would be answered at the Board of Selectmen meeting Monday night. In regards to having a warrant article for the MAC trucks? No, in regards to the legal question that were put forth to via you to the uh, selectman to the uh, to the work. Right. We talked about it as a board, and we still decided mm -hmm. that we were going to go with our original. Right. Right. So, but this is information request time. In terms of, did we did we get this? Uh, the first one, we had four questions out there. One of which was which has the stronger legal footing on the DR recommendation or the board's present position. I don't believe that he um, answered that, did he? I don't believe so. So I'm going to mark that as non-responsive. Can I just comment on that? Sure. <coughs> You're absolutely right, Mr. Chairman. What I find interesting is for several meetings through the last several years, but we always seem to say DRA wants us to do this, DRA wants us to do that. DRA has recommended that we go the route. And if I heard Attorney Gerald, it was like, well, it was it was like, you know, and the selectman said, and in fairness to Regina, she's only one selectman, I'm saying the board said, oh, no, we're going to keep it the way it is. I, I just, this is why the public is outraged right now. There's an undercurrent going on. There just seems to be when it's convenient. So in answer to your question, you've done a great job on this all year with information requests. We did not get that satisfied. That's okay. all I'm going to say on it Monday night. The other, uh, the second question was, was the board's present position manifest in the town meeting session two ballot? How can town meeting voters, merely by the act of voting, choose to invoke the lease agreement's non-appropriation clause. Also non-responsive, correct? We did not hear correct. anything on that. I didn't hear anything on the selectman meeting either. Well, that's, that's, that's what, what we're saying. We were told in that's our prior meeting that we were going to get answers to the legal questions uh, in the form of a presentation at the Board of Selectmen's meeting. So um, I'm, I'm saying, okay, we got the presentation and we got non-responsiveness on that question as well. The third question Can I just make a comment for the sure, public? Sure, Mr. Wubber. And even though you made it very eloquent the other day about maybe even 1996 wasn't totally perfect, we need to go back and let the public know why we're bringing this up, because in 1996 there was a multi-year lease agreement for the ladder truck. Mike and I were on the board at the time. What they did was, after that warrant was approved, every year after they put the 100000 in the budget, because in those days budgets passed literally every year. There was not a worry, and Jerry remembers those, there wasn't a time. But what has happened since is with, and uh, you know, the school does this too, just like the town, we have this budget and we have the default budget. So they, they put things in a default budget, which I'm not sure belong, and then the, the manager has said on TV that, oh no, this is fine because it's in the default budget. And I think as Mr. Pluff so rightfully so asked the question, um, I, I, I believe that in this day and age, I think we need to go back each year because of what has happened. And that's why that transcended the multi-year thing. And that's why it, it transcended because in the early days, there was not an issue. You didn't hear about default budgets and budgets pass, but they're not passing now. And so I think the voters are told the to budget and default budget and there's confusion. I have people confused all the time. Well, what's really going on? So that's, that's all I wanted to say on that one. Oh, the key question is, in one case, only 50% of the people have to vote for it yeah. to get it to pass. That's correct. In the other case, you got to have 60%. Right. It's a key question. Yeah, that's that. correct. It's yep. a key question, you know, uh, when you have a non-appropriation clause in the contract. That's correct. And that was what I forgot to add, Jerry. Thank you, the non-appropriation yeah. Another question that was posed uh, was, what is the likelihood of town success if the board's present position is maintained and it is subsequently challenged in court? 
uh, also it wasn't an address, so it's nope. non-responsive. Um, and the last question was, what is the best means by which to make the appropriation that is least likely to give rise to court action? Also it was not addressed, it was non-responsive uh, answer. Is, is that, uh, Mr. Frank. Uh, I just have a, a question sure. in general. Uh, I do know that tomorrow we are meeting I, again. Who's we? The board, this board here that sent out oh, right, right, an agenda right. for 110 yeah, yeah. on January 10th. And then the town people are coming, so is there sure. a possibility that they will respond to this by tomorrow? We will. Well, I'll get my crystal ball out and let you know. <laughs> just throwing it out. <laughs> They might be watching. And by the way, the That's word was escape clause back in 96, yeah. to your point, not appropriation, but go ahead. Um, they watch these meetings and they see that we're reviewing the information requests and we've labeled them as non responsive. If they choose to become more responsive, that's certainly welcome. Uh, Regina. Well, I would hope that they choose, if the responses that we discussed on they didn't answer those specific questions, mm -hmm. I would like to attempt to try to have those for. Our meeting here tomorrow night so I would hope that if it's not something that the town manager can answer that town council will have to be here to answer them so well, remember so. these questions were posed to uh, Selectman's lawyer because that's what we're right. expecting the answer from is Selectman's lawyer so so you would so I would say that the committee would request that town council be present for tomorrow's review um, I'm not sure that we're doing that. We're simply saying we made these these requests. We just need and we it. haven't got a responsive uh, answer. Right. And that's simply fact. And we're just letting the fact stand on its own. If the town management chooses to uh, react to that, that's certainly they're welcome to. Um, but given the lateness of the hour in terms of the schedule, that becomes increasingly problematic. As we said at our previous meeting, you know, we have a time thing we have to deal with. And when, when I, even Monday night. If we got the answers, if they were responsive, it would still be, you know, late to chew on it and digest it. Um, so, I mean, that's all I have to say on that. I'm certainly welcome to information, even if it comes in late. It's better than never. But well, I would say that uh, since we've already talked about it with the board, and the board still stands with their original decision, that I don't see why those specific answers can't be addressed and answered to the budget committee. I don't in a timely that. fashion. I don't, I don't understand why it wasn't responded earlier. I agree. We all set? We are. OK. 